Good afternoon, everybody. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm Onyume John. In today's video, I'm focusing on how you can use Microsoft Office Word documents effectively. So I'm giving you a thorough introduction to Microsoft Office Word. We will touch everything you have on the screen, starting from the title bar, the individual tabs and the ribbon, the rollers that you have there, how to use it, the scroll bar, the different five fields that you have in Microsoft Office documents, and so many other things. And you will even see how you can move your text from one location to another, and how you can set some simple things within the document. So please don't go away, watch it to the end to really learn one or two things within this video. Thank you. Let's undergo the practical right now. Microsoft Word is a word processing application. You can use Microsoft Word to type documents. You can use it to type term papers. You can use it to send research projects and other things. In Microsoft Word, you can design simple cards like invitation cards. And also, in Microsoft Word, you can prepare letters, memos, and other things so as to give out to people. Microsoft Word is one example of word processing applications. Because we have so many other word processing applications. Let me introduce you to this window. Here you have Documents 1, and here you have Microsoft Word. Documents 1 here is the name, the default name given to Office Word file. So, documents in general, like Document 1. As you see here, it is the default file name in Microsoft Word. And once you start to type something and now save your document, you will now see that document 1 here will change to something else. Then also, see, the title bar here, the very first bar up here, contain the document name and the application name. The application name here is the Microsoft Word here. And coming to this other side, you see that you have three buttons. The three buttons perform four tasks. First, the minimize button. Once you click minimize button, you see that it turns the window into its miniature form, into its smallest form, which is this one now. This is the window, becoming very small. See it here. And once you click it once again, you have uh, make it big. Then the second button perform two tasks. One, restore down, and two, maximize. What's the difference between maximize and restore down? Once your window is in restore down mode, you can move the window from one location to another as you can see on the screen. The Microsoft Office Word is, window is moving. I click the title bar, hold it down and then move it from one location to another. Once the window is in restore down mode, you can also resize the window horizontally as you can see, vertically. even diagonally you see it is only once the window is in restore down mode that you can perform the resizing you resize it you make it big you make it small and you can even arrange it the way you want it to be it is only when the window is in restore down mode that you can perform this activity but 
once the window is in maximize mode you see maximize now you click maximize now that means the window is in its largest form that is the largest size of the window we have the smallest size which is minimized and the window will become a button on the task bar here just a button on the task bar you click it you open the window again and restore down will help you to resize the window the way you want it to be well maximize will make the window big make the window to appear in its largest or its maximum state then the x button here is for close you use this to close the application and now we have closed the application you load it again you use this x button to close the application then along the title bar this three bar up here come up you will see that coming to this side you have what we call quick access to bar quick access to bar by default you have three commands the save the undo and the last one the repeat or redo action button but you can add more by clicking this button now this small button here you can add new which is here new you can add open which is here open you can add other ones as you see it here anyone that you click here that is not active. Once you click on it, it will be added to the quick access to bar. What will you use quick access to bar for? It helps you to see the frequently used commands like save, undo. So that instead of looking for where to have undo, where to click save, you just come here and click save. Yes, it helps you to do your work. Fast. Then see the obvious button here. Obvious button. It is here that you will click so as to have other commands like new, open, save, save as, and others. You will make good use of all these commands as you are in Microsoft Word environment here. And see, you have also recent documents. These are recently opened documents in the system. You can have it more. You can have it more than nine. You can have it like nine. It all depends. And also, you have word options here. And you have exit word here. Let me use this and show you exit here is equivalent to the X button that you have here on the title bar. Yes. Well, close here will help you to close only the active window, and the inactive window will appear. This is inactive window in Microsoft Word. You cannot do anything in within inactive window. And if you can look it closely here, you see that everything here is inactive. That means that you cannot perform any task here. So you have to click the office button and click new. You select blank document and click create. It will break it. But observe this place too. This document. You now see you, we have document one. We have document two. We have document three. That means the more you load new documents within the application the more it keeps counting document one document two document three document four yes also you now see that you will use these options here you use this one to open the new you use this one to open existing documents that is in the system already 
and you use this for subsequent saving as you keep on typing you press s which is control s you press control s that stand for save but at the initial time you use save as and you can use this office button and come to print to print your document out and do other things that you have here now see that Microsoft window is having tabs and ribbon. See, tab is here, home tab, edit tab, page layout tab, references tab, mailing tab, review tab, view tab, developer tab. Each of the tab has ribbon. That's why we say tab and ribbon. So that means this location now, from here to the end here, is the ribbon that comes with home tab, reset tab, each of the tab comes with a ribbon. See now we are in home tab, that's why you will see home highlighted here. See the commands that you have in home tab here. Please, for you to get this thing easily done, there's need for you to copy out the commands that you have in each of these tabs so that it can save as reference material for you. Then come to insert tab you know see these are options that you have in insert tab once insert tab is active you now have all these commands and now you go to page layout tab see that means if you check it closely the commands that you have in each of the tabs is different from the other one home tab has its own commands insert tab has its own unique commands Page layout tab has its own unique commands too. So there is need for you to take time and write it out so that you can know it well. Once you want to do a particular thing, you know a particular tab that contains that command. For instance, I say, where can you locate copy and paste? If you know it, you will know that it is in home tab that you have copy and paste see copy copy and cut and paste is here it is in home tab now i ask you where would you locate something like margin page margin orientation page size and other things it is in page layout tab so each of these tabs contain commands that you will be using then there is need for you to click each of the tabs and copy out the commands that you have that is for that tab so that you can store it even while you are not using the system. It will help you to know where each command is located in the tab. Then, moving down here, you see that Microsoft Office Word window has ruler is like normal ruler that you use to measure something the ruler we have to the horizontal ruler which is the one on top here is horizontal ruler and also the vertical ruler which is here the vertical ruler you have two rulers one on the left hand side of the screen and one on the top side of the window the left side of the window and the top side of the window is where you have your ruler. But in case you don't see the ruler, note that you can deactivate and activate the ruler. See, once your few tab is active and you come to ruler here, you can deactivate. Now you don't have the ruler again. But if you need the ruler, if you need the ruler again, you click ruler here. The ruler will come out. You will see what you will use the ruler for as we will progress. Now, coming to the right side of the window, like this one now, the right side, you see that you have the screw bar. See the screw bar here. Screw bar is also two. But still note, the horizontal screw bar does not display. Why? The reason is that the window from here to here you can see it's full 
that is why you don't have a horizontal ruler. But if this screen is enlarged, you increase the size of the screen. See. See, the screen now is in zoom level that is 100% now. Zoom level is now 100%. If you now hold this zoom level like that and then move it to increase the zoom level, see the zoom level is increasing. Now the zoom level is 252%. And automatically, see now, you have the horizontal scroll bar. What is horizontal scroll bar? and vertical scroll bar is used for. See what you can use it for. I open a document now. And for you to view, for you to view the downside of the document, the downside of the document, you use the vertical scroll bar to screw this point. See this down arrow here, you screw it down. You hold it, you press it, the more you click on it, the more you click on it, the more you are looking at the down part of the document. That means it will now screw it off, take it off, so that you can see the down part of the document. That is going, page 2, it's not going. But if you want to see the top part of the document, you now just come here and use the up arrow here. To go up and see the upper part of the document. That means that the screw bar is used to go across the document page. And also note, and also note that with the vertical screw bar, you screw the screen up and down to view what is up and what is down. But with the horizontal screw bar, you can now view the left side of the page, which is this side now, the left side of the page, and also use this one. See the line. You can even click the slider and then move, or you can just use this arrow here, this arrow here. You click and move from one place to another. So that's how you can use the vertical and horizontal screw bar. See now, what makes the screen to be moving to the left side and to the right side is the screw bar. And what makes the screen to be going up and going down, as you can see, is the vertical screw bar. But after the screw bar, which is this one now, you still have the statues bar. This is the statues bar. The statues bar will now help you to see the total number of pages that your document has. Like now, we are in page 2 of 71. That means that the page that you have on the screen now is page Three. Well, the total pages you have in this document is page 71. The document has 71 pages. So, that is how you can use the status bar. And note, the status bar does not, its function is not limited to that. It can help you to see the total number of words that your document has. And it can also help you to see that there are some errors found in this document, which is this one. And also, if you save macro to your system, it will, this one will now display. But let me help you to see that if you click on these words now that you have here, it will open word count window for you. This is the very small window that tells you the total number of pages you have in this document, the total number of words that you have, the total number of characters without space, characters with space, and paragraph lines. All these are the details or the properties that you have in this particular document. Yes. If you click on this page now, 
it takes you to find and replace dialog box with Koto command being active. The Koto tab is active now. What will you use it to? Let's assume, see, we are in page 3 now. Of course, it shows here page 3 of 71. And it shows here page 3. You are in page 3 of this document now. And you want to go to page 30. You just enter under the field here. Enter page number, you enter 30. And click go to. It takes you directly to page 30 of this document. You can see it here. 30 of 71. This is page 30 of this document. You see. And you are here now. And see, I want to go to page five of this document. You enter five and press enter key. So this is page five of this document. So using the go to command, using the go to command is very very good because it will help you to move across your document very fast and straight away. You can click here opens find and replace dialog box with go to tab being active and you can still press ctrl g find and replace dialog box will still open with go to command sorry go to tab go to tab will be active then you specify where you want to go and you want to go to page 60 you press go to it takes you directly to page 60 of this document this is page 60 of this document. This is page 60 of 71. So that's how you can move across the page. So please, I will still help you to see some other things down here. See this place. These are the different fields that you can use to view this Microsoft Office application. You can view the window using print layout, and this is the default one. And this is the one you will print your documents with. Print layout. And it appears exactly the way it will appear on the paper. Then you come to the next one. Full screen reading. See full screen reading now. Please, there is need for you to know this thing. Because there are times you may mistakenly click any of those buttons. Then it tells you to where you don't really understand as you can see on the screen now it does not look like the other one so you have to know how to close it from here yes you close it and it, 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 it returns to the print layout for you this is the print layout this is the reading, full screen reading view. And this is the web layout view. See how this one looks like. See how the window is now. The window is as if you are in web page. You have to know it. Because you may mistakenly, you were handling your document using print layout. But mistakenly, you don't know how your hand click on the page layout. Your window view change. So you have to know that, okay, this is web layout view. Let me return to my print layout view. Then you come to this place and then click print layout view, which is the very first one. And there, there are other instances that you may want to use outline mode. See how the line mode. See how your document is. Yeah. Outline mode. So please, actually, it's good if you can know how each of the view appears, so that in case you mistakenly click any one of them, and it takes you out of the print layout view, which is this one then you can now know that you have clicked the other view and then return to the print layout view. Let's now click the draft view and see. See draft view. How it appears. There's the draft view. 
those are different fields that you can have in microsoft windows but by default and the one you will be using the print layout view see it here see where my pointer mouse pointer is indicating then you click print layout view here that is the view that is uh, the one that comes by, by by default and also the one that you will be using to prepare your document also come here you see the zoom zoom come here you see the zoom this is the zoom now the document is 100 percent zoom you can decrease the zoom you see the more you decrease the more that you can have up to like three pages per screen the more you increase the more the pages reduce the more you increase the more one page will now display even that like one page the more you increase the more you start seeing that your document needs you using the horizontal scroll bar to move from the left side and view the right side of the document and then view the left side of the document again so make good use of the tool it may happen that you are typing for somebody who uses glass to read and maybe the person is not with his lens and you can now increase the zoom level for the person to be able to read through as you are typing this our document instead of you reducing the screen for you to see it alone you can use this and see it and handle your work but what if the person by your side who is proofreading your the work cannot see this and it's not the person is not with the lenses you can now in, in, increase it the zoom level so as to help him or her to be able to follow through as you are typing these things are the features that you have in office word apart from going to view to see the ruler here there's another way that you can have the ruler if you come to this point now see you can view ruler here and you can activate or the act deactivate the ruler taking this point now see you activate the ruler you deactivate the ruler that means you hide and display the ruler you display the ruler now see the, the ruler is here and you hide the ruler you can use this button for that task also coming to this place just below the down arrow of the physical scroll bar this point you have other options here if you click this it will take you to a previous page of this document and if you click here it will take you to the next page of this document this one does not do one line after another it takes you one full screen one full screen like this up and you see the downside one full screen up one full screen up so, and you can click here to specify what you want to see from here if you click here you can specify that once you click the up it should take you to the next table once you click up the next table the previous table and things like that you can use this place now to specify all those things you see that you have browse by section browse by page which is the default that we are using right now browse by table if you now click table here and you click here you click here it takes you to the previous table and if you click here it takes you to the next table see next table now 4.1.1 see the next table 4.1.2 see the next table 4.1.3 and if you now use this you see that it goes to 4.1.3 again so the previous uh, table but you click here to specify what you want you will want to go page will now scroll from one page to another from one page to another that's how you can use this small buttons that you have here yes 
let's still do some small other things that you will need to know in Microsoft Office Word. In Microsoft Word, before you perform some task, there's need for you to do what we call highlighting or selecting something of this nature. You see the chapter one. I have highlighted chapter one now. See different ways that you can use to highlight something. I can show you many ways so that anyone that you wish you use. Number one now. See your screen now. What is moving on the screen here is what we call mouse pointer. See it is like arrow moving on the screen now. It's called what? Mouse pointer. Then once the mouse pointer once you click within the active page, you now see something is blinking here now. Before this, see what is blinking here? Yes, the blinking here means flashing off and on. What is flashing off and on here is what we call cursor. So once you click your mouse pointer on a particular place, see, I'll click here now, just after this is. I click the cursor is now blinking before the dots here. That pointer, that cursor you see shows you where your next action will take place, where your text will be typed. If you type something now, where your cursor is blinking is where your text will appear. See. When your cursor is blinking, is where your text will appear. The cursor. And also, still one thing. See, as you are moving your mouse pointer from the inactive window, which is outside here, to your printable area, your text area, see, the arrow change shape to eye beam. See now. I it's not like a hurricane. And also, for you to highlight something, let your cursor be on where you want to start. You have various ways that you can use to highlight. First, press down shift key on the keyboard and then use right arrow key to highlight to the front. You see, if you hold it down, you see it will highlight fast. See, when it gets to where you want to stop, you can now, first of all, release the arrow key before you release the shift key. You have highlighted. I think that one is very clear. Let your pointer be before the text you want to start highlighting. You press down shift key and then hold down arrow key once you notice now for instance are you mean that you wanted to highlight only chapter one and introduction here and you notice that you have highlighted to 1.1 which you don't want to highlight that one still hold down the shift key and then use the left arrow key you see even now, if you want to highlight only chapter 1, you can still hold down the shift key and the left arrow key to deselect the other parts that you don't want. Take note. Let's assume now, see where your cursor is blinking. Your cursor is blinking before the U that is for undergraduate here. Your cursor is blinking. Depending on, once you click, Depending on the arrow key that you press as you hold down shift key will determine where you are highlighting it to. I press down shift key now. Let me use left arrow key. You see it is highlighting to the left side of the document. I press down shift key now and use the left arrow key. You will notice that it highlights 
it aligns from the inflection point that is where your uh, cursor is blinking to the left side see well if you if you press down shift key and then use the right arrow key from where your cursor is blinking from the insertion point is where your cursor is blinking now then it will highlight the right side of it take note how you can use shift key plus the arrow key and also note for instance now see where the cursor is blinking after nations here the cursor is blinking and you hold down shift key and hold and press up arrow key on the keyboard you see it highlights one line after another one line after another and if you now press shift key and then use down arrow key you now see it will still highlight one page after another but down while the other one will highlight from where your cursor is blinking up I will still show you other ways that you can highlight your document so that you don't stick to only one way see where my mouse is mouse pointer is located now my mouse pointer is located outside now if I click I highlight I just stand outside the left margin and click and highlight I click I like if I click it and hold it down hold the left mouse button down and drag it down you see I'm highlighting something I'm selecting text yes that's the different way that you can you can just stand outside here highlight yes that's the different way that you can highlight but see another way that you can highlight something very simple you want to highlight from typical here a typical you click where you want to start and then hold down shift key and click where you want to stop that one is very very simple that one you don't need to drag the mouse as you can see that one you just click where you want to start let us assume I want to start before the off here the cursor is blinking before off here then I want to stop at in case here I press shift key on the keyboard and then click the engaged it is that place that will get highlighted that is a very different way that you can use and highlight something okay now you see how other ways to use and highlight let us assume the course is now blinking before C for chapter 1 and now you want to highlight that line no need for you to hold down shift key and start highlighting one character after another to get to the point that you want to stop since you want to highlight that that line just press shift key and use n key on the keyboard e n d n key on the keyboard it highlights the line and if you say that your cursor was blinking at the end of the line just use shift key plus home key on the keyboard to now see that that particular line is highlighted what do i mean here anywhere your cursor is blinking anywhere the cursor is blinking that is your insertion point if you press down shift key and press home it highlights from that point to the beginning of the line and if you highlight from if you want to highlight from that point to the end of the line press shift key and then N key on the keyboard now let me show you something else see where the cursor is blinking here just after nations here if you want to just highlight from that point to the beginning of the document just press ctrl key plus shift key then use home it will highlight from the insertion point to the beginning of the document the chapter one here is the beginning of this document and please note if you want to highlight from that very point to the end of the document use ctrl key plus shift key plus n key 
you now see it takes you to the end of the document this is the end of the document where you have to see this is the end of the document so please make good use of various ways that you can highlight your text then be said you can just press ctrl a on the keyboard that one will highlight everything in the document everything be it text be it object be it whatever it will highlight everything it will select everything that means ctrl a ctrl a on the, on the keyboard will highlight everything that you have in the document please i've shown you so many ways that you can use to highlight your document just stand outside the left margin click it will highlight just click your pointer where you want to start hold down shift key if you want to highlight the whole line hold down shift key use n key it will highlight it it will highlight the line depending on where your cursor is located because there is no need for you to struggle that it must be at the beginning of the line D depending on if it is at the end of the line then you want to highlight the line just press shift key and then use home key it will highlight that line for you and if you want to highlight certain portion from here to maybe nation here from typical a typical nigeria to nations here just press click where you want to start hold down shift key on the keyboard still hold it down and press where you want to click where you want to stop click where you want to stop it will highlight that portion but what if you want to highlight this introduction and move along and come and highlight nations this is not sequential you just highlight one thing and move to highlight another one see how you can do it highlight the first one hold down control key then using your mouse click and highlight the second one move to where you want to highlight again hold down the control key click where you want to start hold down the left button of the mouse and drag across where you want to highlight you now see that i'm highlighting three different things now let me be within this place and highlight first i will highlight chapter i'm not highlighting one of only chapter then i will highlight nigeria i hold down control key and highlight by clicking the left mouse button hold it down and drag across nigeria i want to highlight entrepreneurial and press down control key click where i want to start hold down the left mouse button and drag across the word that i want to highlight once you highlight text you can now copy the text or cut the text what do i mean copy and cut means sending this text into the clipboard of this application the system clipboard yes now i've highlighted chapter nigeria and this entrepreneurial if i now use cut here you just tie everything away and they will disappear see i use this button now undo to bring it back you see i use this cut i cut it you now see no chapter one again you just see one no nigeria that was here you just see the next thing yes if you want to undo the action if you want to tell the system no bring my text back just click here see undo here within the quick access to bar you have undo here you click it it will undo it for you now let's use copy 
copy will only send the duplicates of this text to the clipboard whereby you can now go to the new location that you want to paste it and then use this option first to bring it back see it here the three text the three words that we copied chapter chapter nigeria in different area but take note that they are still here chapter one nigeria and entrepreneurial they are still here but if you cut they will disappear waiting to get to the new location that you want to specify it see it here do i like chapter one do i like introduction and do i like the first line here background of the study you use copy and then click where you want it to stand where you want to place the text and then use paste to copy and paste see it here to copy and paste copy and paste is a kind of moving your text from one location to another yes and now you can copy and paste let me show you how you can change fonts this font now this is the name of this font if you click here you have so many other names like area times new roman so click times new roman here or area black the area black please as you click the font check how the font looks like see how area black looks like here if go back and change it to Times New Roman, see how Times New Roman looks like. Please, there's so many fonts. See this font. See how it looks like. So please, spend time and change so many fonts that you have here. You have so many fonts here. See. See this font here. There's need for you to know different fonts and how they looks like. The font and the font first. If you are typing a particular section in a document or a particular page in a document to replace it, well, it happens that you are not the one who typed it previously. Now you want to just come and type one page and insert. There's need for you to know the font the other person use. Some people will use Tahoma, some people will use Area, Times New Roman. Please highlight your text and study how each of these fonts appears on the screen. For instance, this is Monotype Cursiva, the font that I'm using here. If you click here, you now see Calibre. You click here you have area black see how each of them appears so that you can monitor it and know how each of them appears and in case you want to change the font size here just see font size here take it 14 see how 14 looks like i like it take it 72 see how 72 looks like how big it is Take it 48, see how it looks like. So, please really take time to perform this thing one after another, one after another. And see, you know how to apply bold. Click the text. Bold is now active here. Click italicize, it will make your text to slant small. Click underline here. It will put line under the text for you. Yes. See. Bold. Highlight it. Click bold. It will not bold again. Bold will make the text to be thick. Highlight the text before you click B for bold. Or you press Ctrl key on the keyboard. It will bold it. 
if you want to underline you can press ctrl key plus u on the keyboard or click here on the line to underline it in that line here if you want to slant it small press ctrl ctrl plus i on the keyboard it is for italic or you click here i the eye that you have here for italic please take note that the button you use to bow is the button is the button you use to unbow the button you use for underline is the same button you use to clear the underline and other things so take note that there's need for you to practice this thing keep on practicing this thing until you master it and if you want to move from one page to another if you want to move from one page to another you can hold down down arrow key on the keyboard it will move from one line to another from one line to another if you are using down arrow key to make move one that one line after another down and if you press up arrow key it will move one line after another up but also take note that I've, I've shown you how to use two bar which is this bar now you can click the slider here and then move down move up you can use this button to move down this very button here to move down that's how you can move and you can also use page up to move up and press down on your keyboard to move down you can use page up page down to move up and down yes and also you can use home and end the cursor is blinking here now see where the cursor is blinking after one after one after the one here the cursor is blinking you can use home key to get the cursor to the home use the end key to get the cursor to the end that's all and if you want to go to the end of this document you can press ctrl plus end key it takes you to the begin the end of this document and if you want to go straight to the beginning of the document press ctrl key on the keyboard hold it down and then press home key on the keyboard these are ways that you can move across your document very fast but if you want to go to a particular page like page 20 use the ctrl g that i mentioned the other time and enter the number of pages the number of pages you want to go like 20 and press enter key on the keyboard and press escape key to clear the dialog box so please know how to move across your document use the up arrow key to move up use the down arrow key to move down use the left arrow key to move to the left to move to the left side of the line use the right arrow key to move to the right side of the document use the up arrow key to move up use end to get to the end of the line use home to get to the beginning of the line then use page up to just go one page after another up one page after another up one page after another up or use page down to scroll from one page after another down Page 17, 18, 19, 20. So if you just up to move 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. So please know how you can move across your document. I want to show you how you can format your text now. Apart from adding these few things. That I have shown you already. Now, how can you add what is called superscript here and how to add subscript here? See, if you are like the text and you want to make it subscript, see subscript here. Now, see, now we have symbol for water. That is symbol for water. H, small 2, which is subscript. 
can go. Now, if you want to type maybe 3 raised to power 2, you now type 32. It is the superscript here, superscript here, that you will use superscript. You know to, to help your system to know that you are looking for 3 raised to power 2 and 3 raised to power 2. You know to, and see this symbol now. H two, the two should be subscript, and S O four, the four should be subscript two. As you are using your Microsoft Word, this is what I want to show you now. Microsoft Word has two lines that it will underline as you are typing. See the first one here. It is the it will underline red, and also it will underline green. See this A N O. Is red now and go here is it underline green these are the two lines your documents will underline the first one will show that the thing that you type this error this is the misspell word the misspell word will underline red like this girl this curve. We mistakenly add F to curve. It now makes the curve to be incorrect now. But what of A not here? A not is correct, but it's still underlining red. The reason is that, generally speaking, if there is any word that is not in the dictionary that the system is using it will underline the red will be like a no is not in the vocabulary that the system is having the system does not have a no in its own dictionary that is why a no is underlining red here though it is correct but it only means that this word is not in its own dictionary in its list of words or in its vocabulary this girl here is misspelled word so you have to correct it and then it will play then as for this you know, if you are very sure that it is very correct you can right click your mouse and then click add to dictionary it will not add enough to the dictionary and now it will not underline in my case because anyway you will type enough the system will underline the system will now understand that enough is a, a, a correct word that you want to use then now see this one be good to school the system is now underlining green baby line here this one shows the grammatical error. That means this grammar is not correct. He, as a single person, should now come sweet or followed by goes. He, and the system will now correct. Or he is a should be just boy. But see, the secondly, the person at age. If you right click, you see that the system will suggest boy you take it so those are the two lines that you have as you are typing in your document and take note on how you can correct it in most cases just let your pointer be in that word and then you right click it will now bring out solution for you let us assume we have this one now this chapter you just right click on the word you now see chapter is here then you take it so those are the things that you have as you are using this your document and then note we have so many other things that you need to know we have so many other things that you need to know for instance if you want to centralize text move your text to the left that's when you come to paragraph here and start to format the paragraph. You now see align left. 
will take, take your text to the left side. Center will take your text to the center of the page. Center will take the page, the text to the center of the page. Then align right will now take your text to the right. Let me highlight this portion now. I select from here to this nation, from a typical Nigeria as a nation here. Let's see here. I say left. See how I align left? It is only the left side that will have a, a block form of text. Center. It will try to centralize the text. Align right. It is only the right side will get the block of text. And then justify. Both sides will try to be equal. Well justified. And also, if you want to change line spacing, this is what I mean. Come to this place now, this line spacing. Click here and take 1.5. Click here and take double line spacing, which is 2.0. You'll see that one line after another, there will be enough cap. And if you take, take 3. You see, the more line spacing you take, the more the caps will appear between the lines of text. But it all depends on what you are preparing. Some letters, you will use single line spacing if 1.5 will make a letter that should be one page to enter two pages. You can use single line spacing. In some cases, you can use 1.5 line spacing. And if you are typing research projects in some departments, they use double line spacing. That's how you can apply it. Also note, as you are typing for a particular person, maybe the person is not around, then you want to show the person what you did not understand while typing. You can highlight certain portions and then come here to use shading. Use any color so that once the person is around, you now show the person shading. Tell the person I did not understand this place in your document and the person will look into it and correct it. Then after, highlight it and then take no color. Also, if you want to Add bullets. Add bullets. You can use here to add bullets. Or use this to add number in form of bullets and other things. You cannot cover everything right away. But please, there are so many things you have to know. Don't go away completely from this channel. Visit this channel often. Subscribe to this channel so that as I, as I present more videos that handle each of these things, you will be able to see it. Because we have so many things to learn here. You cannot cover everything within this introductory part of the, the class. So please. Check this channel, you have more. Check this channel, you will see how to insert a table into your document and how to handle the table effectively. Check this channel, you will see how you can insert a cell spreadsheet and how to use it. Check this channel, you will see so many things. Or even check the description of this video. You will see links that will take you to various things that you can do within Microsoft Word document. I think that one is the best. In this video, the description part of this video carries so many links that will take you to different things that you can do in Microsoft Office Word. So let's call it a day for here for, for now. Let's call it a day for now. And check the description of this video. Follow the links and then learn more 
whatever you want to do in Microsoft Word. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. Thank you for watching till this time. And thank you for visiting this channel. Invite your friends to use this channel too. Share this video to them. By so doing, you are helping them. Thank you once again and bye for now.